Welcome to Old Guy Tech, the OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, this is Rob of Old Guy Tech TV, and I'm here today with Kathy Norwinski running for supervisor in District 3 in El Dorado County, and we're really privileged to have her with us today. So, Kathy, how are you? I'm fine, Rob. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. It's so nice to get to meet you and have you come. Thank you for coming here. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. I certainly appreciate the opportunity. Well, you got it. And I'll tell you what, you got to thank this job ahead of you running running for office. It's something else. You got to be everywhere, every place. Well, you do, Rob, but somebody's got to step up to the plate once in a while, don't they now? Yeah, they do, and thank goodness for that. So well, why don't you start, tell us a little bit about yourself, about your background and, uh, you know, the, why you wanted to run and, and th- that type of thing. Well, first of all, I'll give you a little bit of my background. I was born and raised in Sacramento, California, moved up to Placerville about 25 years ago, and I have done everything from work in the public sector as a welfare fraud investigator for El Dorado County, as well as in the uh, corporate America sector for the Melville Corporation. Mm. Uh, I worked at Rancho Seco for SMUD, and I also have had the joys of self-employment. I had a restaurant, a to-go food restaurant in El Dorado County that was called The Cook's Choice many years ago. And also, uh, I have had a business called A Plus Mobile Dentistry, which provided dental services to skilled nursing facilities. Wow, that's great. So those are just some of my little uh, jobs over the years. But the reason that I decided to run for Board of Supervisors is I'm a firm believer in public service, and I think you can accomplish public service in many areas by supporting different organizations, by uh, belonging to different groups. But I think that getting involved in politics, you need to be realistic about what you're doing. You can't change the world, but you can certainly affect some changes for the people in your community. And I feel that my experience, life experience, as well as work experience, just everything I've done, would make me a real attribute to the board in the fact that I could really represent you and everyone else in District 3 as well as the entire county. Yeah, well that's great. It's the kind of job that needs the passion and the the drive to to really want to help uh, the the citizens of El Dorado County. Uh, What do you think um, is is one of the biggest issues that the the county is facing right now? Well, right now, as we know, we have so many people that are unemployed so many of the people in our county have been involved in the trades. Construction, we have seen just go down the skids. Yeah. And that affects people's jobs. They don't have the money anymore to spend. So that affects our retail people, our small businesses. And these people are leaving the county. And they're actually leaving the state, too, for as far as that goes. So we need to find a way to get more jobs in here. And by doing that, I think we can create people that are going to live here so that's going to help our construction industry plus all of our empty spaces both commercial and residential and those people will hopefully spend their money here which is going to add to our tax base which will help support the services that we need that government does provide for us and needs to such as public safety right would be a good example of that so um Getting back to small business for a moment, uh, how do you how do you feel that the county interacts with small business? Is there do you think there's a good relationship? Do you think there's a bad relationship? I think that right now we have too many regulations. I think our fees are too high, and I think we need to do something to have our fees lessened and to make it easier for the public to open up a new business and for the current businesses to stay in business. Right. And in order to bring new business here, what's it all about? It's about what are you going to do for me, Rob? Right. And so we have got to offer them something economically to make them come here and stay here. We see businesses going down under all the time. Right. Yet we have seen some new businesses. But we have certain areas where we have a lot more growth in that area, and that's pretty much down the hill, El Dorado Hills. Right, right. We yeah. have been fortunate enough to have um, a couple of new restaurants open up 
uh, in uh, District 3 in Placerville specifically. So that's been very nice. But uh, Diamond Springs has vacancies all over, as does Placerville. Cameron Park. Yeah. I mean, you know, the whole county has got them. Yeah, you, you can certainly travel around the county a lot and see an awful lot of vacant buildings, and it seems like there's a new one every day. But how does government really interact with the businesses? What can we do in El Dorado County government to help att actually attract a business to come here? Do you believe in giving a tax incentive? Uh, do you believe in and trying to promote the county in a way that would make it friendly for a business to come I think in. we what need to promote doing? the county as a as a great place to to have a business because look at all the great people that we have up here and we have a lot of people that have got various backgrounds that would do really well in the private sector and the private sector is what creates jobs right it truly does and I think if we look at uh, what other areas are doing I, I, it's kind of fascinating to me that we take some of our government officials over to the state of Nevada, for instance, Rob. And we asked the people over in Nevada, why are California businesses, why are they, why are they coming here, you know? Well, all we have to do is take a look at all the regulations, right? right. And they start at the state, of course, and we could go even further up on that, but that's another story. But we have to look at the county and we have to say to ourselves, okay, wouldn't it be better to have some construction going on, yeah, depending on what area you want to have that construction in and what type for residential, multifamily, you know, it might be a, a new industrial park. I mean, we have plenty of those down the hill that are, some are vacant still, but we need to give those people reasons to come here. So that means we're going to have to reduce the fees. We're going to have to maybe give them incentives to say, okay, this is what we're going to do for you. We're going to let you come in here. We're going to reduce your fees. We're not going to rag you around. We're going to make it easier for you to go through the permitting process if you're building something new or even renovating something. And then the only catch is you really need to make sure that you hire people in El Dorado County. Right. Instead right. of hiring Sacramento people to come up and work here, <clears throat> right. and then they're going to go home to SAC and they're going to spend their money down there. Well, it, it helps everything in the county to have county residents stay in the county, work in the county, stop, you know, the wear and tear on the roads, uh, keeps our tax base up here. Uh, so there's there's a, a big reason to try to retain these people to work up here. So, all right, so the county only has so much that it, 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 that it can give to somebody for an incentive. So how about the relationship that the county has with the federal and the state? I mean, what what is that relationship like? And and what do we have to do as El Dorado County residents to, to help make it better or worse or whatever it is? Okay, well, first of all, let's start with our state people. I mean, let's face it, they have imposed different guidelines for all of us to, that we have to go by. Everything from, you know, our general plan to uh, our, our timber areas, um, our rivers and streams. Okay, so we have the state up there. And what's the state doing, Rob? They're saying, okay, we're going to put a moratorium on this, and you can't do anything. So, therefore, as local officials and as a citizen, we've got to get a hold of our senators and our assembly people and encourage them to vote to open up these areas for us that we can use to get into our timberlands, to be able to, to use our rivers and streams for some of the things that they're for. And some of these things, some of these places are actually, if you look at some of our rivers and streams, they're on private properties. Right. You know, some right. of them have been grandfathered in over the years. Right. So we, we need to be able to have access to that. The federal government, of course, you know, we've got our Congress people that are, they're doing their best, but. Well, you know, the. It, I don't think there's a simple answer. No, there really isn't. Inform me a little bit, though. Help help educate me on this issue on the dredging. Uh, I've been just hearing vaguely. It's My understanding is a moratorium on dredging for gold. For another five years, yeah. So so they came up with some kind of science that said this is beneficial to a river? Well, it all has to do with, you know, you've got your naysayers, and you, you know, you've got both sides, obviously. Some people are saying that by the suction dredging going on, it's going to release all the mercury from back in the day when they were doing the gold mining, and that's going to go into the, the rivers, and then we're going to contaminate everything from here to the delta, basically, is what they're saying. On the other hand, you've got the other side that says, hey, you know, this is what I want to do. This is what my family's done forever, and 
my science shows that the dredging that's done really isn't releasing any more mercury into the river than a good rainstorm and our runoff from the snowpack creates exactly. every year. So you've got both those sides, the is, green back and forth. Is that is that on the federal level? Or that's is this the, a state? That's the state. It's the state yeah, level. And that's why it. they put in the moratorium. Yeah. Huh. Well, that sure doesn't seem right, does it? No, it doesn't. I think, you know, our, our property rights, you know, are slowly being yeah. leaked away from us. Yeah. What, um, can you tell me what the the sources of revenue for the county is? I mean, where, where does the bulk, well, let's, just, let's just talk about revenue in general. Where does the county get its revenue? Gets it from everything from our property taxes to sales taxes to monies that come in from the state monies that are collected. We get a certain percentage of that. It just keeps coming on down. It just filters on down out of different arenas, and most of it goes into our general fund. Mm -hmm. And our general fund is what pretty much pays for our services. So how has the devaluation of property affected the revenue in Colorado County? Well, I believe that the assessor, you know, generally if you feel that, you know, your property's dropped in value because of A, B, and C, you can ask the assessor to uh, come in and reappraise it. But I understand now that it's pretty much become an automatic thing because mm -hmm. of the devaluation of everyone's property. Mm -hmm. So the property taxes drop down based on the new appraisal of your home. Right. So there's not as much money coming in. And part of that money, you know, goes to the school districts, fire districts. I mean, depending on what part of the county you live in, and right. different, you know, there's different little pieces of the pie. Did the, uh, did the census that was taken um, for this, this period of time, did it show one way or the other where our, where our population is going in El Dorado County? Is it shifting to different areas? Are more people leaving the county or coming in? Well, our population countywide went up, Rob. But, uh, for instance, up at South Lake Tahoe, um, there was a loss there in population. Mm -hmm. And let's see, I believe the Placerville area, Diamond Springs, that area, you know, grew, as did El Dorado Hills. I think out in, you know, your more rural areas in, let's say, uh, District 4 and um, District 2, they lost population. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they everybody had to jockey around, and that's why with the redistricting, the boundaries have changed. District 5 that used to be South Lake Tahoe, which of course is pretty much an entity into itself, has now come down and taken over Pollock Pines. Huh. And okay. I believe uh, District 2 now has switched, and it's come down a bit and picked up part of this, but lost part of that. 3 has just kind of expanded a little bit mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's... it's um, so I've, the redistricting did, did yeah, have an effect. It did have an effect, yeah. yeah, definitely. And, of course, they had like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different um, maps oh, to yeah, look at. Oh, yeah, I saw them, yes. And yeah, some yeah. of them were, you kind of shook your head, and others you thought, well, that looks like it might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. But I believe they have to come within like 1% mm -hmm. in balancing the population. So that's very difficult to do. Sure. And that's how you get your little, you know, Yeah, all the way like to this. jagged. So they, they settled on the uh, Nutty Night version? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so they, they did settle on that. Well, that, yeah. okay, that's good. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that changes, especially for the incumbents that are already there. They're going to have a whole group of uh, new people. Yeah, well, I know, yeah. for instance, my sister lives in Cameron Park, and she was in District 4, and now she's in District 2. Oh, wow. So, and she's on the south side, or nor actually the north that's side. The north side, yeah. Yeah, so things are, you know, so it's like, you ask people, so, who's your supervisor? But, gee, I'm not sure anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and based on the map, the map that, that I have, you know, it's not down to detail, detail. So right. the best thing to do is really is to call elections and say, hey, this is my address, 123 B Street. You know, what district am I in now? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I having been involved a lot with the, with the running the different campaigns, um, when you mentioned El Dorado Hills, I had a smile because El Dorado Hills, never seemed to believe they were part of El Dorado County. And, you know, you'd go knock on the door and you'd say, you know, support this candidate or that candidate or whatever. And they'd go, well, I, you know, uh, it started with sheriff's election a long, long time ago. We'd knock on the door and say, hey, I hope you're here to support you know, the sheriff of El Dorado County. I'd go, well, they, he's not my sheriff. My sheriff is, not, you know, <laughs> they didn't even know where they were. So it was very, you know, very telling. Uh, I mean, you stand there and you go in front of a grocery store 
And uh, you stand there and you just talk to people. And it's, uh, I always found that to be a very interesting uh, uh, to find out what people feel. Where, where are you? Where do you live? Why do you live there? You know, where do you work? Where do you spend your tax dollars? Where do you buy your car? Whatever it may be. Oh, so. yeah. Well, it's very interesting, too, because I know I've done voter registrations before. And you would be surprised how many people are not sure. Am I in the city of Placerville? Mm -hmm. Well, I, it says Placerville. My address is Placerville, but they actually live out Gold Hill. Right. Or they live out Pleasant Valley Road. So a lot of people, just because they have the Placerville address, think that they're within the city limits, but in reality, I can see the confusion there. So, so, yeah. for, oh, so yeah. even for uh, the area up here, that's that's true. But you would think Eldorado Hills would know that they were <laughs> Eldorado Hills. There's that big sign when you come up the hill that says Eldorado County. Yeah, you think, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind well, of funny. Well, they probably. I like to think of it, Rob, as the fact that they're they're new here and they just haven't gotten involved in the uh, politics and. And knowing what's going on locally, yeah, yet, yeah. So. yeah, they're not involved. You know, it, and I, being a person that's always been involved with uh, politics, it, it always amazes me the amount of people that don't vote, but yet they're more than willing to criticize somebody for their position. And uh, oh, yeah. you know, it, it's it, it's back again to trying to make sure that we get the people to understand that their vote counts. And I always feel that it's a candidate's job to make sure that those people. Oh, let me tell you, vote. I've gone out knocking on doors and I've had people tell me, oh my God, you're the first candidate that's ever come to my door. And, you know, you think, gee whiz, really? I mean, obviously you can't knock on everybody's door, but right. you try to get together with as many people as you possibly can. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's, I think, how are people going to know who you are? Well, yeah. you know, there's some areas, of course, are very difficult to walk. I, I, oh, but you know, you know, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but you do your best. You do your oh, best. Oh yeah, you do your best. I understand that. Yeah. Um, do you feel there's uh, uh, in the services that the county provides to the citizens? Is is there something they're either doing wrong or doing right, or is there an area that the county is not addressing that you think that we should address? Well, Rob, I think that most of the departments are doing the best that they possibly can right now. Um, I think that the Sheriff's Department has done an excellent job. I really do. I think that uh, Sheriff D'Agostini and Under Sheriff Williams have just really worked hard to uh, try and stretch what they have and to cover everything in the county. And with the new program that they've come out with, um, you know, this special team that they've got, I, I think they're really going to provide better coverage mm -hmm. uh, for the citizens. So I think they've done a good job. Let's face it, the district attorney's office has just been absolutely hit hard with all of these high profile cases. Oh, yeah. So I know that they're that they're struggling. And the public defender's office, of course, the good thing is for them is at least, you know, they can appoint uh, someone to represent um, a client. So yeah, you know they're at least not hung up by that, but that's still money. That's still money. It's still that's money. Still, it's still budget. money. Still right. money. Yeah. I, I know DOT has uh, a lot of problems with the road upkeep and stuff. I think that has that's, to be addressed. Uh, that's definitely. a never-ending battle. Yeah, it is. that truly yeah. is. So you know, there's there's definitely I think you know social services, you know human services. They have uh, they have probably more on their plate now just because of the uh, economics and there's a lot more people going in and applying for food stamps and assistance um, mm -hmm. whether it's Medi-Cal, CMSP program which is the county medical program for um, quote unquote the Id indigent but not exactly anymore it used to be that way a lot more but now we also see that we're serving a lot of people that are basically the working poor that uh, don't have insurance right and that's and, and then with the unemployment rate as high as it is, COBRA only goes so far for most of these poor people, and a lot of them yeah. are losing it. If they had it to begin with. If they had it to begin that's with. That's it. So that's, very, that's a very difficult yeah. a situation. A lot of these people yeah. are um, using the, uh, the emergency room as their primary care physician, and, and that's just... Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, but They don't really is. have it's much of a choice. A, you lot, know? a lot of our uh, primary care physicians up here in the county are not taking new patients. And a lot of them are not taking any patients that are over 70, which really hurts the senior population. And we have a huge senior population. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's, it's extremely difficult yeah. for people to get uh, medical services. Something to work on. Definitely. So let's say you get elected. Let's say, you know, it happens and Kathy, you are now supervisor. What do you feel are going to be the, the first top three items that you really want to work on? 
as supervisor? The first top three. Well, first of all, my primary thing would be listen, listen, and listen. Because you have to listen and you have to learn. And then once you've spent a little bit of time listening and learning about everything and how everything works, then you start in on making sure that the monies that are going to various departments are being spent wisely and making sure that not everything is always referred to staff, but that you're actually looking into it yourself. Secondly, I like to see the public involved in decision making. I like to, to listen to people because, Rob, you may have an idea, okay? And I need to hear what that idea is if I'm on the Board of Supervisors. My ideas are just my ideas. I might think that we should take Highway 50 and turn it into the new Champs-Élysées of California. Well, that's not really a good idea now, is it? So that might be my idea. However, I think that it's important for me, as a member of the Board of Supervisors, to hear what you have to say and your family and your friends and your neighbors. That is what I think is very important. Right. And thirdly, my main thing is public safety, I think, is a real huge issue for me. I want to make sure that we have adequate staffing for both the Sheriff's Department, the District Attorney's Office. I want to make sure that the jail is properly staffed, especially with all of these new folks that are going to be right. coming up the right. hill and going yeah. to be having room and board with us. Yeah. Yeah. And plus the ones that are gonna, we're eventually going to have to release out on the street. Yeah, that, that's a whole other subject for another day, but that's a big one. That's yeah, a big issue. Really and I think, is. a lot, I think a lot of people are now becoming aware of the fact that uh, you're not going to have room for some of the people that have, have more of a minor charge against them but should still be in jail. They're not going to have room for them. To have to no, they out. simply aren't. And I think that probably, you know, the ankle bracelet program that's probably going to be you know put into use more and more i yeah, think as we yeah. as we see the the lower end offenders you know released yeah. back into the county and i know they want to do the um, you know rehab programs there have been studies that have actually shown that at the on the low end of offenders uh, if they're around family and they do get some sort of job training, that the recidivism rate is lower mm -hmm. than it is with just kicking them out. Right. Because I think California has probably the highest recidivism rate in the in the country, and I think we're like at 67% recidivism. Yeah. That, I mean, that's horrible. Yeah, it's a terrible number. Yeah. It is bad. It is bad. So let's talk a little bit about IT in the county. Uh, the county has some specific informational technology needs, computer systems that they need. And some of the systems in this county are going on 20, 25 years old. Uh, is that part of what you're going to look into? Uh, do you have some ideas behind how to handle IT? You know, I have to tell you, Rob, um, I am not the techie. I am not. But I have, in fact, talked uh, with a couple of people about this issue. And I think that the county is really is going to have to start, I, I guess there's a lack of communication between all the different IT people within the county, I understand. And I think if we can get everybody together, we're definitely going to have to do something because I know that um, everything is antiquated and within, um, it's probably, oh, way, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it's way antiquated. And within in the next, you know, five to ten years, something has got to change. Right. Um, I know that, unfortunately, other government agencies that I'm aware of quite well have uh, at a higher level than the county have been working on programs for 30 years and they still do not have anything accomplished. Some people have gone in and retired working on that program. Oh, yeah. And I don't yeah. want to see that happen because we're here in the county. We don't have the monies to, no. to just keep, you know, feeding, you know. <laughs> Here well, you go, here you go. We can't do that. We're still working on the legacy systems that came through Y2K. I knew of a number of Cobalt uh, uh, programmers that got hired back just to make sure that the mainframe was going to handle Y2K, which it did. But we're still running on the same that same equipment. Oh, yeah. One of the things that, my opinion, being in IT most of my life, is that the county better start making sure they got a good budget going because it's going to be very expensive. They've waited too long. They're too far behind the curve, my Well, opinion. and that's what happens, and that's yeah. the problem. And But we can't just keep throwing money at it. We need to sit down and actually focus on what, you know, yes. what are we going to do? You know? Well, you know what I... I mean, everybody's going into the cloud now, you know, so right. it's like, you know, 
we've got to keep up with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, part of the ha what happens in IT is that there's no checks and balances with it. I had the opportunity to work a little bit at the Pentagon and for DOD and all that, and watched how the how the military handled their, uh, especially their antivirus and malware situations, how they worked on it. And, and there was an accountability. If you were a vendor coming in and you were going to pro provide something for, let's say, the Navy, uh, you, you, had, you had to fulfill it. I mean, it was, you had a, an A to Z job that you had to do. And if it wasn't done, you didn't get paid. It seems to me that we've got a bidding system in the state of California a lot of times where people aren't held accountable. They just keep throwing money on it. Oh, you know what? I ran over budget, too. So now I need oh. another $2 million. I, being, in, you know... Uh, as, as a private uh, contractor, uh, you know, I, you just can't go and say, hey, you know what, I bid X, Y, Z, but now you're gonna, I'm going to charge you G because I couldn't feel X, Y, Z. How would that fly? Yeah. Well, it's too bad C.C. Myers doesn't do IT. They should, huh? Yeah, they should. <laughs> but but the, you, you understand where I'm coming I do, from. Absolutely. I absolutely. I mean, it seems to me that there is, there's no uh, incentive to make sure that people get these jobs done on time uh, at least in the IT world, just like you mentioned C.C. Myers. I mean, he has a big reason to get those jobs done early. Sure. I think the same thing's got to be applied to other aspects in the county. So, enough of my soapbox. I didn't, this is your, <laughs> this is your <laughs> interview. No, 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 no. But, 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 you got to listen. You have yeah, to there listen. you go. This you is the listening listen. part. Yeah. Well, a couple more things. We're going to wrap this up. But one is, if you had a magic wand that you could just wave around and correct an ill that's happening uh, in county government, what would that one thing be? Oh, boy. One thing, huh, Rob? Just wave the wand and make it happen. Just wave the wand and make it happen. Mm. Well, I guess probably it would really be nice just to see a board of supervisors that all work together well, work together with all the department heads, and everything went along really nice and smoothly, and everything got accomplished that the public needs and that the public wants. I think it would be great if everybody just all worked together and didn't have their little jabs that they have to give each other once in a while. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, if you're going to wave a wand, wave it for well, something well, like why that. Not? Right? Why, why not? not? You know? Let's all get along. <laughs> so, okay, let's let's go ahead and go ahead and wrap this up. You know what? Look into that camera right there and give your message to all the voters why they should vote for you and, and uh, what they can do to help you. Well, they should vote for me because I'm the best candidate for the position and I will represent you. I am make myself available all the time. Even now as a candidate, I've made myself available for years. Whether people were interested in hearing about local politics, national politics, something to do with the foster family program, something to do with the sheriff's posse, something to do with the chamber. I'm always available to talk with people. I'd be more than happy to have any of you contact me. I'd love to talk with you or a group of people. I'm always available, believe me. So what's your website address? My website is voteforkathy.com. All right, so voteforkathy.com, and you have a phone number? Uh, yes, you can reach me at 916-337-1180. Great. Hey, Kathy, thank you so much for being here with us. We really appreciate it. And... For those of you out there, hopefully you watched uh, all the candidates and you see what they have to say and get a hold of us. And we'd love to have you come in here and sit in this chair as well and talk about what you have on your mind. Maybe a small business, maybe politics. It could be any of the above. We'd love to have you here. And, you know, without you guys, we wouldn't have started this. So thank you very much. Hey, this is Rob with Old Guy T TV. Now, I can't even talk. Rob with Old Guy TV Tech. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and I want to talk to you today about Windfall. Windfall has two outstanding offers for you to take advantage of. They have their 12-week business-only ad for just $60. That's just $5 a week. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere. Windfall has a rewards program like no other, a real windfall. Give us five and your ad is free. So refer five people or businesses and you get your ad for free. Visit Windfall on the web at www.shopthewindfall.com or call 530-621-1698. Everybody needs a Windfall. Thank you, Windfall. See you soon.